Hello, everybody. Today, I just wanted to share a little bit about Yahweh, God Almighty. And that's actually his real name in the centuries before Christ. It was it was a custom not to say Yahweh because it was thought that Yahweh was too holy to say out loud. But that's his it's the only proper name God has because it honors God. But anyway, Yahweh is God Almighty. He's holy and he's spirit. He's the Alpha and Omega. And most of all, he's the high God. And God is love. He's a father. And he created the heavens and the earth because he wanted to have a family. And before the fall of Adam, there was no such thing as death. So he devised a plan, Jesus Christ, the second Adam, how he could redeem man back to where they could have everlasting life. So I'm going to share a few things about that. And the word Holy Spirit, the capital letters refer to God Almighty, Yahweh. And when it's in small letters, it refers to his gift, what Jesus Christ was all about. He brought the gift of Holy Spirit. Those would be the small letters. And it's translated Penuma Hagion. So if we go to Numbers 11, before the day of Pentecost, before Christ ascended into heaven, Holy Spirit was only available if God placed it on someone. And then after, Holy Spirit was available to everyone just by confessing and believing. Now, would somebody read that, please? So Yahweh came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did so no more. But two men remained in the camp. The name of one was Eldad, and the name of the other was Medad, and the spirit rested on them. And they were of those who had been registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his chosen men, answered, My Lord Moses, forbid them. Moses said to them, are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all Yahweh's people were prophets, that Yahweh would put his spirit on them. So that's an example. God would put spirit. And would somebody read 1 Samuel 16, 13? This is when God put the spirit upon David. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of Yahweh rushed upon David from that day forward. Then Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. And I'll just throw in there after David sinned, he was the most, his prayer, the most important thing was, Father, please don't remove my Holy Spirit. Okay, so then we go to John 4.24, and that's God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit. So then God's is big in your life as you make them. He's as big as big in our life as we make them. If we go to Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge, but fools show contempt for wisdom and sound teaching. And then Proverbs 9, 10. I got that. Um, Proverbs 9, 10. The fear of Yahweh is the starting point of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is the starting point of understanding. Okay, I'm going to read John 3.16 and 3.17. Everybody knows those verses. It said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have life in the age to come. For God did not send the son into the world to judge the world, but that the world should be saved through him. And in John 14, verse 1 and 6, now let your heart be troubled. Continue to trust in God and continue to trust in me. In my father's house are many places to live. 
it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will receive you to myself so that where I am, you will also be. And where I am going, you'll know the way. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And Jesus is the only one that ever got up. He conquered death. The only one out of all the gods today that died and rose again. And then in Acts chapter 1, verse 4, it says, this is when the apostles were waiting for Christ to come back. He says in verse 4, and being assembled together, the apostles with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, because John baptized with water, but you will be baptized in Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now when they now when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the father has set within his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. And that applies today too, from as far as the east meets the west. You will be my witnesses. And the power he was talking about is in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound from heaven, like a strong rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as if of fire, which spreading out came to rest upon each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them, giving them, was giving them to utterance. So they received the Holy Spirit. That was the gift that was promised and God had in his foreknowledge because the first Adam blew it, Jesus Christ was the second Adam. He lived a sinless life because he always chose to do the Father's will. And he was the son of God. He was God's only begotten son. If he was God, like some people say, that there's no way I could compete because I'm not God. But if he's the son of God, a man like me, well, then we have something there. That, that's something I can do. John 3.36 says, whoever believes in the son has life in the age to come. But whoever defies the son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. You know, God calls it eternal life because it's a promise and it's absolutely going to happen. Just like the whole Bible to this day has absolutely happened. But he calls it eternal life because he says it's going to take him all of eternity to show us how much he loves him. Loves us. And 1 Timothy 2, verse 3 to 6. I'll read it. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and humankind, a man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, the testimony given at the proper time. Thank you. That's God's will. He wants everyone to be saved. And, you know, it's when Jesus Christ came, he was with, he came for the down and outers, the, the people that the world said you'll never amount to anything. The, 
the people, the world called dirt that, you know, he didn't come to the people that they threw out all their set of encyclopedias because they knew everything. You know, he came for people like you and me and to redeem us so we could have eternal life with him. And I can just share that, you know, God is love. I can share one one thing in my life that happened. And, you know, my mom, it'd be six years now. She was in the hospital. I saw her on a Monday and Tuesday, she's in the hospital. A Wednesday, she's on a machine. She, That's what's keeping her alive. It, and I just... And she was on that machine for like six days. And the doctors and my sister, because she had power of attorney and they all said, pull the plug. And I couldn't fight it anymore, but the doctors said that she's probably just gonna go, you know, she's not responsive. The machine is keeping her alive. So I got together all my siblings the night before and I'm the oldest of the six kids. And I said, let's make a circle. I'll take mom's hand and then let's all go in order. And Diane, you're the youngest. You take her other hand. And I said, if you guys want to pray, pray, you know. And so I started off, my prayer was, I just thank God for her life because she was born again. And I thank God for her life and that he would just, clean her slate, that all her sins would be forgiven. And that was my prayer. And it went all the way around. And I was amazed all my brothers and sisters prayed. And so then we went home and the next morning, my sister called and she says, mom, Mike's alive, mom's alive. And she's normal. And so we all rushed down there and I told my siblings, I said, you know, I said, this is a gift. And I said, she's not going to stay. I said, put closure, tell her you love her, whatever. So we had that extra day. Everybody put closure. And that was a gift from God. It, I mean, when we all prayed, none of us prayed that she would live because we were told basically she was dead in the machine. And that just shows how much Yahweh loves us. You know, it's, he does little things like that. And it doesn't happen all the time, but it happened. So today we can't gamble. We need to get saved as soon as possible because anything could happen. We could get hit by a car. Or, I mean, anything. And, Every time we look at the world or hear this or that, it's it's getting darker and darker, you know. So it'd be a wise thing to get saved as soon as you could. It's easy to do because somebody else paid for it. Christ gave his life. He paid for it. So that's why nobody has the power over death. I want to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. And if someone would read that, please. There is no man who has power over the spirit to retain the spirit, and no one has power over the day of his death. No one is discharged in that war, and wickedness will not rescue its owners. So that's why it's wise. And he's calling us. You know, people say, I, he's calling us. We're not calling him. He calls us. And if you're wise, you listen. If you hear that call, it's maybe you should take heed and listen because it's God's will that all men be saved. God is love. And then 1 Peter chapter 1. Starting in verse 3, 1 Peter 1, 3 um, through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has given us new birth to a living hope by means of the resurrection of Jesus Christ out from among the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable and undefiled and unfading, which is being kept in heaven for you. The ones being guarded by the power of God by trust 
for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. You rejoice in this, even though now for a little while you must suffer various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your trust, which is more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, will be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Although you do not see him now, you believe, but believe in him, you rejoice greatly with inexpressible and glorious joy because you are attaining the goal of your trust, the salvation of your souls. And in 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, so therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything in the glory of God. It's one thing, the devil knows your name, but he calls you by your sins. God knows your sins, but he calls you by your name. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything to the glory of God.